Okay, you want to hear some universal monster movie horror jokes? Because, you know, it's kind of our thing now. I guess. Okay, go. <laughs> Tell me a shitty joke. Tell you a shitty joke. These aren't shitty jokes. They're good jokes. Like, give me that much. I'll be just that. <laughs> Why doesn't Dracula have any friends? Because he's a total Why? pain in the neck. <laughs> Fucking hell, bro. <laughs> I'm not even going to dignify this one. Okay, alright, alright. All right, here's here's another one. Of <laughs> I saw the Wolfman at the bus stop the other night. It could have been possibly a, just a very hairy guy. Either way, the silver bullets worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, they're fucking terrible. Okay, I have one more. I have one more and then we'll get into it. Uh, why did okay, Dr. Let's... Frankenstein hire Igor as his assistant? Because he had a hunch about him. Tongue and For cheek. those of you can't, who can't see, I have my tongue pressed right into my cheek. <laughs> <laughs> we never get this right on the first go ever. It's just terrible. Yeah, but that's why you love us. That's why the people keep coming back. That's why you love us. Hi. Hi. I'm supposed to say hi. <laughs> you say hello. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, go. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm Lee, and I want to be in the sequel. And I'm Renfield, and I want to be typecasted for nothing after this. <laughs> and you're listening to... There Here Podcast. A discussion... Dissection. An utter disembowelment... Of all things horror... Fear... And the murder. And the murder. God, that Today was Today we're talking about... <laughs> <laughs> So today we're talking about Todd Browning's 1931 absolute classic. And like, when we say classic, we mean like, of the highest order. We mean black and white movie classic. That's how old. This is like one of the OGs, the original goths. I was there for the premiere. (laughs) (laughs) For your 35th birthday, yeah. (laughs) He's turning turning 35 again. (laughs) Yeah. Insert shady rattlesnake voice here. (laughs) I promise you guys we're going to have a soundboard soon. I'm working on it. Trust me. Trust and believe I'm working on it. Yeah, we're talking about Dracula. The one, arguably the guy that set horror in motion. Kind of set the stage to bring horror to like the masses like yeah. the actual masses where you see like um we'll get into it a little bit later but like nosferatu the uh, original adaptation of dracula uh-huh. uh, was kind of smushed killed there's no reason that we should be able to see that movie today but we can through the the wonderful art of pirating <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah this is kind of like almost where it all began we this this movie is sort of because you and i were speaking about this and i even pointed it out it is hokey cokey as you can fucking like and the fact that it's hello wookie ding dang dookie this movie is (laughs) hodgepodge another (laughs) (laughs) you can really tell that this movie was a real product of its time especially when it comes to special effects and all of these kinds of things but the first person obviously when you see dracula is you want to think about the og uh, original like black velvet cape you know suit and white tie uh Little you know emblem yeah. widow's peak i'm looking at you while i'm <laughs> what i really <laughs> in case Mono, any of you yeah. in case any of you want to know we are currently uh filming in black and white here because we want to be we want to be you know a little kind of og and uh, respectful to the source material because this and fucking I film wasn't. In 15 minute quick drag. Uh, <laughs> quick track. Oh. Quick track. Love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds more impressive than it is. I just have very thick eyebrows. This film, I, had, I mean, first of all, starring Bella Lugosi as Count Dracula. Oh, what a babe. I, I, I don't really know how to start this because. There's so much that I want to kind of start talking about first before we actually get into the like anything to do with really the film because like this film is uh it's not an adaptation it's an adaptation of an adaptation 
of an abridged version of the play, homaging the novel. Yeah, yeah, for real. And also, uh, kind of being in line with a lot of movies of this era, it's 71 minutes long. This podcast, I almost guarantee, is going to be longer than the movie itself. (laughs) (laughs) I think we can safely say that. Safely. So, Bella Lugosi, of course, absolute babe, um, originated the role on the stage. Broadway! Kind of, <laughs> kind of, like, latched onto this role, and it became his baby, and the character became synonymous with Bella Lugosi, you know? Yeah. So much so to the point where he was buried in his original Dracula costume. That is... You know, I think he was very, very proud of his work on stage and on screen. That's dedication, bro, I tell you that much. Uh, as far as I know, I think he's only done... Uh, another Dracula-esque character in the film White Zombie. And he went on to work with um, Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, we, it's deep the friend of the pod, thing. Bella Lugosi, deep friend of the pod. You know, actually, come to think of it, Lone Cheney, he was actually, in case anyone was wondering, he's OG, he's the Wolfman. And he was the original choice for Dracula by the director, actually, Browning. Uh, by the director uh, but unfortunately Cheney actually died the year before of lung cancer he was getting treatment for it and all of that kind of thing but he ended up having a throat hemorrhage and he died only the year previous to filming I actually think that's why a lot of this film was kind of very disorganized because a lot of film historians were saying like no one was really interested in filming this film apart from Lugosi and like Browning would show up drunk most of the time to filming and I kind of think like that's probably due in fact to he wanted his best friend as the title role and he never got it so I guess the passion for him probably went out after Cheney's death I guess well it's odd you can kind of see where uh, all these men you know uh, Long Cheney and Boris Karloff like like the three kind of like I guess like figureheads those are like the the, the main three universal, yep. you can kind of see, and this is no disrespect to either of those, but like, uh, you can kind of see how each actor could almost be interchangeable for any of those roles. Yes, yes. You know I mean? They're all Fair. kind of European characters, very kind of samey, same type, you mm-hmm. know? I can yeah. see Wong Cheney as Dracula, but I can also very easily see the Lugosi as the Wolfman, because as far as I remember, the Wolfman is set in hungry we start with obviously like renfield arriving in that weird romanian village that has everyone <laughs> like it's like one building there's like nothing else around <laughs> it's like almost a set the sets were questionable okay they were questionable yeah. They actually, spent all their money on the Frankenstein sets, which came out the same year. Actually, come to think of it, well, like those sets, Dracula's Castle and Carfax Abbey, where he moves to in London. Carfax Abbey. Carfax Abbey. I know where the bastard slips. <laughs> Sorry, we'll get to that with Fort Coppola. Uh, he ended up <laughs> first lay <name> drop. <laughs> yeah. Those two sets were Frances, actually. Francis, I never well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> those two sets were they were actually used continuously for years after uh, until they were dismantled mm-hmm. I think it was like 10-15 years later that they ended up dismantling those sets because they were so overused and they just kept using them Universal Studios is absolutely like I stand that that because like the amount of work that they put in and like they just kept reusing those sets I think that's really cool you can see there's actually a set piece towards the end and that's just this it's actually like in the finale like right as uh, in Carfax Abbey where um it's just this huge staircase mm-hmm. this gigantic staircase with like no railing no nothing on it and <laughs> Bella Lugosi is just like full Maleficent like throwing a cape <laughs> around and um I forget Oh, what is her name again? The, the actress who plays uh, Mina is also just like walking down it in like a huge, ro- like a huge gown. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's like a, there's like a 25, 30 foot drop if she was to fall, if either of them were to, yeah. was to fall. Yeah. Neck broken, you know? Uh, speaking of Mina Harker, guess who was in line for playing Mina Harker? Bella himself, who? <laughs> Uh, you actually said it earlier. What happened to baby Jane? 
Betty Davis was Betty in line. Davis, no. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know what? I can actually see that. Betty Davis around this time was not the Betty Davis we know now. And would have been softer and more demure. Her eyes would have been a little more closed. Um, but I can actually see... Um, do you have the name of the actress there? No, but I can actually oh see... God. I can actually see... Oh, a lot Helen of Chandler was her name. I can actually see a lot of Betty Davis in her. It's like the same kind of hair, the small, mm-hmm. like tight kind of curl, real cropped. Yeah. She's also not really in it much. No, so I it think would she has like, like five lines, and oh, that's kind of it. <laughs> it's such a waste of uh, Betty Davis so I love the way that when Renfield does come into that village like everyone is like super like no you must not go to the Dra- Dracula's oh, it's castle so dramatic. it's so dramatic everybody's <laughs> like don't go he's like I'm going up to Castle Dracula and the guy is like <gasps> what? what jump back <laughs> yeah it's looking great and then they keep cutting to this like female villager and she's literally just like (laughs) she's like literally having a panic attack she's having four concurrent panic attacks at the same time (laughs) just with the idea of this man going up there because they like basically like evict him off this carriage and he's like no 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 no. excuse me put my bag back up on there i will will go up there and um they're like no (laughs) you thought you're not going anywhere (laughs) and then he's like no 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 but i must go you don't understand I, I must go. That. I have a date. I have a date. I love that. I, have an I think it's there. this movie is just so like we we will really get into it now with like certain scenes, but this movie is so utterly camp and hilarious in some parts that you're just you're looking at it going, why are they talking this way? <laughs> this movie is seventy one minutes of a bent wrist. That's how camp. <laughs> It is so, it's so over the top. But, like, because, like, I was even saying this to you, like, before filming, that this is basically not a movie. It's a, um, a play on film. I think it's, you know, play, especially... The is all very much the same. The makeup yeah. is very much the same. The yeah. sets are the same. That's why, like, a lot of them, we'll get into this a little bit. <laughs> all the, like, big imagery from the book or even from the play, everything is just referred to off screen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit later look over like, there <laughs> yeah exactly what is that over there oh my god it's a big dog great <laughs> Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just so, uh, and I think that also like kind of explains it a lot more because uh, this is the adaption of the play and Bella Lugosi and uh, Van Helsing and also uh, there's another character, I think it's Dr. Stewart, but I'm not sure, that they're all actors who performed in the play but joined the job of filming Dracula. And I think yeah. that's why we get some of those reactions is that kind of like hands up in the air. Oh my God, reactions. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like it's, it's so enough. you're kind of meant to overreact for the audience in the background. You exactly, know? they call it um, like uh, acting for the back row. Exactly, like, people exactly. Can see it, you, know? you need to definitely exacerbate movements in order to kind of get across a little bit more. But I think in this film, that kind of translates in a very weird way because you look at it and you're like, why are they acting like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. It's very charming, and this is kind yeah. of like, yeah, I feel the charm of movies of this era. It's because, like, nobody kind of knew how to make a movie yet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was saying, like, everything from this time is experimental. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, like, there's kind of, like, like weird close-ups or weird, like, kind of awkward moments where it's just somebody's face with no music, and it's literally just, like... <laughs> <laughs> that's it for like a couple of seconds you know they take it to the extreme and i think that's why i think it's so camp and so funny like even when it's scenes that aren't meant to be funny you're just looking at them and you're like why why are you doing that <laughs> <laughs> and don't get us wrong like there are some genuinely kind of unsettling moments yeah this, creepy, some creepy stuff in like, this. unexpected places which i really enjoy so renfield <laughs> renfield like gets kicked out of the carriage at the borgo pass this is something you mentioned to me because like I was looking at it and I didn't think it was striking but Bella Lugosi's Dracula is very clearly sitting in the other carriage driver's seat (laughs) he's just there literally he gets in and like it's crazy because this basically an approximation of the first like third of the novel where they just kind of smush every like Transylvania is only in this movie for like a couple of minutes and that's it um but yeah, he gets up and Bella Lugosi's wearing this like very stylish outfit with like a little bowler hat and like he's like wrapped up. Sc- 
and you can see his face. But he's not disguising himself yeah. whatsoever. And yeah. it, it's just, it's exclusively Bella Lugosi's face. Yeah. Everything else is covered except yeah. for his face. And then he gets to the carriage after complaining about, like, driver, I say, you're going too fast or whatever. Um, <laughs> they get to the castle, <laughs> and he's just standing there. Uh, Renfield is just standing in this, like, huge cobweb covered fucking like entrance to house and dracula just walks up behind him and doesn't make a sound obviously and renfield doesn't notice him at all and he turns around and he's what the fuck was the deal with that driver he looks exactly like like he just he he doesn't put two and two together at all even though it's like that was very very clearly you in a slightly different you literally just took your coat off that's the only difference bro I absolutely love it because I know for a fact that the rehearsal firmly believed that Bella Lugosi was very much a method actor. You know for a fact. And you were yes, there too. I was there. I was there for filming. I'm that fucking old. You were there for the release of the book. You had to find <laughs> copy of Dracula. I was at Bram Stoker's funeral, okay? The fact that Bella Lugosi would like go up and down the room like with his cape wrapped up across him and he would continuously <laughs> chant... <laughs> He would continuously chant his lines like, I bid you welcome, and I am yeah. Dracula. And he would do it. I, I yeah. think that's so, those two scenes, like, I bid you welcome. His hand is, like, outstretched. I think it's so iconic that just I, for that I scene, like, you take so, it seriously. Like, some of the most iconic scenes in cinema history. Exactly, yeah. Some and the then you get the, um, the Children of the Night, what music they make. What the music scene, they make. They, that was yeah. actually... But again... Just refer to off screen. Yeah. <laughs> you hear the noise of like the wolves and then Yeah. Like it's just gestured to. Gestured to and well, it's and music the same scene, this is the hokiest thing that comes up, like to this point where Renfield looks over at the wall and as I mentioned there's all these spider webs everywhere. Oh. And um <laughs> and this like this Oh my god, I don't even know like what the word I would describe it as. Like it's like Not a huge a rubber d- spider. Children's toy. It, yeah, it's literally like a Halloween decoration that was like pulled up on a string that just like is shown for like two seconds. And then what I actually found interesting here was Dracula makes a comparison to himself as a, a spider, not a bat or a wolf. Yeah. Which yeah. I kind of like. And then this is where we got the uh, the famous line, blood is the life. Yeah, he, um, he does this whole kind of like... Uh, how do I explain it? Like he says something like a, a spider traps its victims in a web or or something like that. Yeah, like it needs to eat like living things. Yeah, blood is the life. Yeah, yeah. I think but then really we cool. get that shot of Dracula kind of um walking up towards this like huge wall of spider webs, and he's and then we cut to Renfield for a second, and then in the very next shot, he's like through the spider yeah, webs yeah. and it's unbroken. Yeah, which I like. Like small little like filming tricks like that kind of do give it more of like a serial kind of otherworldly vibe. And Renfield doesn't question it at all. He just kind of like <laughs> takes his <laughs> breath out. <laughs> Like, it's just like, away. like guys i'm not exaggerating it's literally like like a 20 foot tall 20 foot wide piece of spider web that he just kind of like <laughs> pokes through it in a weird way like brushes past and just walks into this fucking castle dracula is currently in the movie. process yeah. of moving to london so that's why renfield is there <laughs> yeah yeah and I love the right. fact that Lugosi had fought for the line when Renfield uh, asked like, uh, about the wine and things like that. And Dracula responds with, I never drink wine. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah. very, um, yeah, I love it. Uh, like, I don't know how to respond to it. Like, he fought for it specifically because the fans. It's wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that. I think it's really great. And then we get like this just whole fucking weird. I want to say like the brides rose up to go to his room and attack him, but then they didn't. They did. Yeah, they kind of just like descend on him. And I actually really love this iteration of the brides. And in pretty much almost all iterations of Dracula and the adaptation, the brides are one of the parts that I'm very like, okay, how are they going to do it this time? But I love how kind of like plain 
and um, sort of ethereal. Kind of ghost- yeah, they're very ghostly because yeah. they're in kind of just like white gowns, just plain like up and down white gowns. Kind of the way they move, mm. and they're always kind of accompanied by like lots of smoke and like fog. Yeah, you know, and they're and dark just, they're eyes. just three women. They're not they're not monstrous or any kind of creature or anything like that. And they kind of all just rise up out of this doorway and kind mm. of like yeah, like attempt to like kind of descend on him a little bit. And then you get to like the see. This is what I was saying about like the spider earlier. Like the first of many rubber bats. <laughs> Oh God, like, <laughs> very clearly they try like an elastic string to the middle of this bat and just bobs it up and down like this you know i love it i just think it's so funny and then like dracula appears and he's like away with you <laughs> appears from like stage right <laughs> literally because it's like the bat is there for a sec there's some smoke and then bella lugosi like <laughs> Enters in from like on stage. It's so fucking hilarious. And then this, oh. like, the brides kind of just like, oh, like you were saying earlier, you notice something. Yeah, um, these these brides. I just and like I don't think no, we don't see them again after this. But like they sort of like uh, Dracula kind of expels them from the room. He just kind of wafts his hand as if to like fuck off. This one is mine, kind of thing. And the brides sort yeah. of like shrink back uh, to the door. <laughs> the first one there's three rides and the attempt first one <laughs> gets away <laughs> yeah attempt to glide back the two the second two one moves too slow and the last ride moves too quickly and just as you'll see it i i'm gonna fucking screenshot this and i'm gonna stick it up on instagram the second bride to move away moves too slow and the third one moves too fast so they literally collide into each other <laughs> on the <laughs> corner of the screen you can see it happen and it's so fucking hilarious i love it now, quick side note everybody i there are like very like few little things i didn't notice in this movie um i got way too stoned last night and watched <laughs> this movie zoomed in one and a half times and was just sitting in bed like where's the rest of this movie bro like i can't like I think a whole third of this screen is cut off. Why would they even god. bother putting this in here if I can't see nothing? Oh my god. So yeah, I didn't notice like loads of little things like that. They move, like, like I was saying earlier, they move fairly, fairly quickly through the story. But basically, Renfield is under Dracula's control from this point onwards. Because they skip like very quickly to the journey from Transylvania to London via the, the ship. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me but they it's, um, uh, the Vesta the Vesta yes and yeah. Renfield was like a fucking raving fucking lunatic like he's eh, eh, Renfield eh, thinks eh, he's on eh. goats okay oh my like, god like we think like in two seconds Dracula goes from becoming this like random dude to master master <laughs> like literally you know what I mean <laughs> like it's so like I, I don't know how to explain it because like of course, like the st- they obviously wanted the story to move fairly quickly, but like this movie is like the book on speed. It's like, <laughs> come on, we gotta go, we gotta go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> let's there get to the no... scene. Another club, another it's club. Like development or like exploration of things, because like the book has quite quite the amount of lore and yeah. like um like history in it. You know, yeah, yeah. It's very like, down to like small details of like what the chicken Jonathan is eating with is made with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. those are, like, small little details like that. But yeah. we get none of that here. It's, it's very much, um, that, that Lady Gaga meme. Another club. Another club. Vesta. Loved it. Another boat. Another boat. Carfax Abbey. Done. <laughs> Dead. Over. Literally. In, like, two fucking seconds. Oh, my God. And this like, is actually... Like, if I went to go see this as a play, I would be like, that was a very short play. <laughs> yeah (laughs) like i want to definitely touch on it now because how fast it moves the reason why they they were going for a stronger adaption of the book that much i do know because there were plans made the script was written all of this kind of thing but they went for a small production specifically because two years prior the stock market crash of 1929 so the studios and films and all of that were dramatically like stretched back pushed into the background saying like no we need to get the economy going back 
everything else is going to have to take backseat. And if you want entertainment, it's going to be cheap as chips. We are going for some dollar store Dracula here if you want a movie. So I can very much understand kind of like why why they did it. But like there's some sort of things like, I mean, like definitely Lucy's arc. <laughs> like, you know, like they have these, you know. There's also that scene, this is something I pointed out to you about uh, Renfield, was once the Vesta docks and like all the crew are murdered and blah, 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 they open yeah. up the hatch uh, for the cargo hold and they just see Renfield Actually, sitting there, uh, eyes uh, blind. It's so creepy. It is and so fucking the scary. actually quite blown out the, the cut that, because uh, we watched the same cut last night. Yeah. Um, the cut is quite dark, and obviously it's a black and white movie, but, like, the whites are very, very, very white, and the blacks are very, very, very black. Yeah. And when he's looking up, because it's, like, a, it's in a bull shot, and they're looking down, like, a set of stairs at him. Yeah. And he's just standing there, like, mouth open. He looks crazy. They say he looked like a wild animal. Yeah. And uh, his eyes are open so wide, and it's so blown out that it looks like he has just solid white eyes. Yeah. And they're, they look, they're almost glowing. You and know, he and does that. Speaking of growing eyes, we'll get into that when we finally, when we get more of Dracula. Yeah, he has that like, Morticia Adams band of yeah. like white, like light across the eye, which to me always implies that he's um <laughs> like putting somebody in thrall. He's like casting he's a glamour over them. He's mysticizing them and uh, yeah. um what you call it that Im- uh, imposing his power on them and things. They did that with the cinematographer Carl Freud. He actually, what he did in order to capture that kind of iconic, like, shot of him, like, chin lifted, uh, everything else black and just his eyes illuminated, was he got two pencil, uh, two pencil lights and he aimed them firmly at Bella Lugosi's eyes in order to create that kind of hypnotic stare. And I just think that's so, so fucking cool. And it's been used so many times afterwards. And it's just so simple. It's so effective. And it's one of the, like, very, very, um, in a movie with kind of shitty effects, it really, really stands out as, yeah. like, kind of my favorite effect in the movie. I think it yeah. looks really, really good. And it really, yeah, I think it um, conveys the whole, like, yeah, hypnoticism of, like, look into my eyes kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Look into my eyes, only my eyes. Don't look away from me. Just look into my eyes. Look your neck, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of that... Uh... I actually think I look more like him than I do Dracula right now. <laughs> do you know how to get that effect? Eat the KFC, edit the band. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of fangs, this is, um, I mean, apart from Nosferatu. What did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> speaking of gay people, I fucking hate <laughs> Bella Lugosi famously didn't have fangs. Um, it, yeah. it, it never... Like, everyone just says, like, oh, he must have, like, uh, there's those shots of him with fangs. But, like, but no, he never had fangs in the film. He never yeah. did it. And bites. The you never see the neck the, uh, the bite on the neck comes from being in the, the bat form. In bat form, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. he never, like, you never actually see blood or or anything like that. You You see none of that, which I think is still effective because, like, we associate uh, Bela Lugosi with, like, two puncture marks on the neck dripping wound and him like with uh two holding bangs the, that's like the poster that i would know is him holding uh, mina like that and him like leaning in yeah like to like it's like almost a kiss but it's not I yeah just, it, that's my background on my phone currently but again that all kind of it goes back to the play where it's like nobody would have seen a tiny little detail like that yeah. on on stage yeah. of like slightly longer teeth than usual or two little dots in the neck and they talk about the dots in the neck Van Helsing actually brings it up quite a yeah. lot and um, I feel like that's enough yeah I definitely think because it, it, like you were just saying like you you have to act for the back row so you don't if someone is like 50 rows in the back they're not going to see puncture marks on the neck you're just going to have to listen to someone say but look over yonder on her neck there are puncture wounds you know what I mean you're going to yeah. have to say these things so it makes sense uh, that they literally just adapted the play script into a film script, you know? Definitely, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Dracula deboards. Wait, we meet this lady. The, the, there's a lady that he bites, and she's like, Flavia Bannel, sir! Oh, uh, yes! 
<laughs> and he just like very slowly, very non consensually, just like I'm gonna bite you. I'm gonna bite you in like two minutes, hold on. And like just very slowly like leans into her and then she just like screams and it's off. Oh and then he's just God. walking yeah, walking around through London. Yeah. And um gets to, in... the, to the theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I also think is interesting because the thing about this with the theatre, that was filmed in the same place that was filmed for The Phantom of the Opera. And I just think that's so, so fucking cool because it's a great kind of like nod to another film. It's an Easter egg. The one thing was, like you were mentioning earlier about the music, there was no soundtrack to this film, obviously, until much, much later on. But there were two yeah. pieces of music. The first one was in the opening of the film was Tchaikovsky's. I think it was like the second movement of Swan Lake. And then yeah. this part, which is another piece. Like because music like actually in the film, not like yes. as part of the score. Yeah. Like a part of the scene. Yeah. yeah. There was no real soundtrack to the film, only being added in 1998 by Philip Glass. It was believed that sound being such a new invitation of film, only I think I being think added was like five years prior to that, I think. With um, um, Al Jolson in, oh, what's that, like the jazz singer? That's like the first movie, um, even though it's like horribly racist, it's like the first movie to have picture and sound line up together. Oh, okay, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but don't watch it, watch it if you want like historical, like, Accuracy, um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but also it's a movie about a guy who does blackface. So yeah, <laughs> um, it was believed at the time that sound being such a new invention that the audience would not accept hearing music in a scene if there was no explanation for it being there, which is so interesting yeah. to me because obviously nowadays, like we see film as like we can't have film without background music in it because it just doesn't yeah, like make it sense stands out if a film doesn't have a score now but i actually think yeah. it works very effectively in this movie yeah. um because it kind of i was gonna say the word awkward awkward is the wrong word it makes things feel a little bit more on edge makes things feel not as relaxed because there's no like the music is not telling you how to feel which is generally what a score is there for it's yeah. really like this is a sad scene this is a a, a horror scene this is a, a romance scene, scene you know what i mean yeah. but like with this this movie depends solely on the acting and solely on the performance of the actors in the movie you mm-hmm. know i love that every time yeah, so does the performance like, you put you, your arms okay, up you see, but i have like these huge like poirot clown sleeves on that were like under like a huge black coat who was that like, that's um... my like impression of a 1930s actress like that's my impression of Faye ray is like arms up in front of the face like this you know who is yeah, that right um now. walter mercado <laughs> walter mercado <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna screenshot that now you doing this and putting up walter mercado that's going up on the instagram for i don't sure. have sex i have sex with the nature I, wait i did walter mercado as dracula <laughs> In that scene, Dracula meets for the first time, like, Dr. Seward, Mina. He's, like, transfixed by Mina. He's sexually aroused by Lucy, and he meets... Very um, easily, I might add. He literally goes in, speaks to one of the uh, the stewardesses, like, like in the theatre, and he's kind of like, go tell those people behind that curtain that he has a phone call. (laughs) And then just, like, walks right in. He's like, hello, I'm Dracula. (laughs) Love you. I absolutely love that. I think that's so good. And like, that's again, that's another uh, uh, thing that I couldn't think. Because I had seen Dracula Dead and Loving It long before I'd seen the original Dracula. And I just remember that scene being the fact that the maid keeps forgetting what the fuck Dracula asked her to do every time she walks in on them. It's so hilarious. I love it. And then they kind of just... That's it. That's yeah. <laughs> <And they leave laughs> it. And it's like uh, it goes into um like Lucy's like um like doing her hair in the mirror or whatever there like that and Mina's like I am Count Dracula from Transylvania and then she's like you can make fun of him all you want but I think he's swell. <laughs> yeah. And then Dracula comes into her while she's sleeping and she's murdered off screen. It literally is like I bad. I have this he's note like flapping in the doorway of her like <laughs> thing and everybody in this fucking movie has a giant veranda outside the window everybody just has a window everybody has like a whole courtyard attached to their bedroom <laughs> 
<laughs> I just love the fact that like this is again like part of the play, but like she's killed off screen, and like I literally have to note Lucy is dead <laughs> from that moment on. Like, she just that. doesn't exist <laughs> after that. It's just so terrible. Yeah, and they almost don't even refer to her being dead until like the end of the movie, which yeah. is in like ten minutes, by the way. <laughs> 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 Like, She's I could like... the entire script for this movie on the back of my hand. Yeah. It's fucking <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so like the next day, like Lucy is dead and like he like is dead and she's done with. She's like she's just done with everything. And... <laughs> like, oh my god, Lucy died yesterday. We had her funeral and now she's the lady in white. And she's eating kids, yet we don't see any of this. <laughs> no, literally. Yeah, literally, here it is. It's like, oh, in one paragraph, it's like Dracula meets Lucy and the rest at the theatre. The next line is Lucy goes to bed and dies. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, this That's is literally it. this is so amazing because in contrast to, like... Um, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula where you get that amazing um, scene in the crypt she comes down, the candles light up and she's carrying uh, and a child and, and, rough, and everything baby, yeah, the like, headdress and the uh, pale white skin the throwing the blood up like you get such Quincy. amazing Quincy, yeah. um, like how do I describe it like you get such an amazing uh, shots and like how could you pass that up because, like, I mean, you're literally told, like, this is what happens in the book. Like, she comes back, she eats kids, blah, 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 blah. And... Yeah, like, she's a whole-ass character in the book. Yeah. Um, and... I'm just going to say here, spoiler alert for whenever we do talk about Ford Coppola's Dracula. That's my definitive Dracula. It's the one that's I... closest to the book. And yeah. I think it is the one that conveys the imagery from the book the best. They really, yeah. um, yeah, the costuming and everything, that is perfect. But we'll get to that another day. I seen... Franz Ford Coppola's Dracula first, long before I'd ever seen the nineteen th- this nineteen thirty one original. So mm. that's I I one hundred percent agree. Uh, my Dracula is Gary Oldman as Count Vladislaw Draculia. I really really do think like he is the OG, and I wouldn't say anything else because yeah. it's so beautifully shot and blah blah blah. But we'll we'll get to that when we get to it. But like yeah, for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, for real, I actually think, like, quick note, I think that there is something to be said that, like, just because something was done first or because something is the original does not automatically make it the definitive version, yes. I don't think. These remakes, or not even necessarily, or just better adaptions can be more definitively better than the original. But God knows, yeah, had, the, so. had the stock market crash not happened, like, God knows what we could have gotten for, like this film I don't know because I think like I think they were pretty fixed on having this be like pretty much a straight um, pretty much a straight film like a like a capturing of the the play because the play was like wildly popular it was huge when it came out I think it Um, ran for like 167 actually I think I have that in my notes yeah 167 times they played uh, or the the actors did that play it was very very popular which is like why it like does give a little bit more backstory and kind of answer as to why Bela Lugosi was so attached to this character because like yeah yeah, he kind of established the like like this movie kind of establishes some cliches yeah for for sure yeah Dracula to come in for vampires to come in general but um he yeah. also went to the widow of Bram Stoker. He went with Universal Studios to Bram Stoker's widow, who owns the rights to the Dracula novelization, all of that kind of thing. It was also the reason why Nosferatu was almost uh, eradicated. Mm-hmm. She argued for $200,000 for the rights for Dracula. And because I think that's definitely like why Lugosi got the... Got, got it in the first place he argued with her to get the rights the price for the selling rights from two thousand two hundred thousand dollars to sixty thousand dollars like if universal is like of course that's just going to solidify him in the title role for me i guess <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. I was going to mention though, Bram Stoker, like pretty much like one of the one of the most famous authors in the world, I would say, um, Irish author. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you ever been to his house or the museum? In, I haven't, but I I have been to his house. I have been to the house. I've never gone in, but I have stood outside it. The museum is fabulous. It's all kind of set up like a dungeon and like a dungeon slash museum kind of thing, where they have like not just a history. It's not just kind of like a history of Dracula in general, but a history of like um vampires. I'm talking like like vampires with a Y, where they have like all the posters from all the Dracula movies that have been made, including like um like things like Interview with the Vampire and like Queen of the Damned, all that kind of stuff, yeah. which is like all this artwork. That's all the way out. Um, how I think like it's a stunning place. We should definitely go when our country gets its shit together. <laughs> if you guys want us to uh, retrospect interview with the vampire, Queen of the Damned, all of that kind of thing, definitely let us know. Leave it in I'm the comments. So happy to do that. Yeah. yeah, I love live for Interview of the Vampire. I think it's an amazing movie. Renfield is like a ward, I want to say, of Dr. Seward because he seems to like throughout this entire film, like he seems to like get out of his prisons or not. His, yeah, his... He just pops up. I was like, <laughs> how the fuck did you get into my place, house? And he, literally, every once in a while, they'll be like talking and they'll be like Van Helsing and uh, me and his dad talking, whatever, like that. And then Renfield will literally just like, you rang and just enter the scene and just like walk into the room even after they're like okay we want him locked up by himself and under close observation and these two like orderlies there's like a man and a yeah. woman uh, that like work <laughs> thing. these two people are uh, fucking hilarious yeah. by the way there's so many moments where they, are. Like, lose they really are. Like, there's a moment a little bit later where he's like everybody around here is mad played by an irish man by the way yeah. he's the worst in of all time <laughs> he's like Oh, I, I think everyone runs here in bed. Sometimes I think we're the only normal ones, but I have my doubts about you too, love. And then, like, <laughs> it just kind of exits up, the just screen. screen. <laughs> <laughs> literally just like. <laughs> exit stage left again. Oh my god. Like, like I was saying earlier, like. The theatrics, the theatricality of this film is just so overpower. It's overpowering and it's so campy. Uh, like you know, how very camp. But you know, it's, it's so good. charming. Though. I feel like that's the entire charm of this movie is how like <sighs> it is. You know, it, sometimes it's just hard. It's hard pressed to like take this film seriously when it gets like particular scenes. Like I know exactly the one because like the maid. It's either a maid or something is like standing, and she's just like, "What the fuck." <laughs> She kind of like looks in, like looks into Mina's room when Dracula's there and kind of just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, 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 like just like ignore it and leave. Yeah. It's so funny. But so okay, so we get into this scene where um Dracula is exposed, Dracula is uh, everybody Dracula is cancelled. Um <laughs> <laughs> I love how quickly Van Helsing like like gathers that information. Like he immediately knows, like, yes, Dracula nos ferato name drop and yeah, it's like, like the away. undead but also they met him i think he was like invited to like stay with them or something yeah. after meeting them yeah. at the theater for like a moment which i guess like because he can kind of cast the glamour like have people in thrall it makes yeah. sense but then it's like oh wait dracula's just here in this house slash asylum yeah they're like having a conversation and he's like being like super polite and like kind of, like he okay john uh, jonathan harker is also here and dracula is blatantly trying to fuck this man's wife right in front of right in front of her dad and her husband literally and then she's like oh i feel terrible she's talking about having this dream quote unquote dream of fog so thick that she could barely even see her bedside lamp yeah. in her room and then she's two red eyes which like kind of comes up a couple of times in this movie but she has this big like scarf around her neck or whatever and van helsing's like take off your scarf you balding bitch no he's like what's under your scarf huh what's under your scarf uh open your purse exposed <laughs> literally he like takes it off and she's like no no and then yeah she just has like two little bites and then a dracula is just there yeah. dracula just is there all of a sudden and um there's like this like compact mirror over in the corner and van helsing like looks mm -hmm. into it and sees that there's no reflection yeah of course like vampire trope all the men in the room slowly like like look uh, at the same mirror what? And, like, uh mina goes upstairs and dracula is like again in front of her father and her fucking like fiance is like do you mind if i come up to check to see if you're doing well later and she's like yeah go on and then goes upstairs <laughs> <laughs> 
Jerry call. <laughs> and then Van Helsing's like, could you come here for a minute, please? And like, um, <laughs> asks Dracula to come over and goes to like, and goes to like show him the reflection. And Dracula just like wallops it out of his hand. I don't like it. And then just leaves. <laughs> I love that. It's like a no. I did not want this selfie with you. Oh my god, it's so funny. But this is funny. where we get the ultimate like um example of <laughs> things being referred to off screen. Dracula leaves out the balcony window or whatever, and just leaves and walks to Sage right, and <laughs> and then Van Helsing goes out. Uh, I think it's Van Helsing or Jonathan. Uh, um, no, it's Jonathan. Yeah, out. yeah. Yeah, Jonathan looks Look out over there. Um, <laughs> oh yeah he goes yeah he goes to like follow dracula out and he's like what what is that over there it's like some kind of huge dog and then van helsing's like oh maybe it was a wolf and he's like a oh, wolf there's no wolves in london or whatever like that <laughs> but all of this is completely referred to off screen and the use of animals in this movie is crazy when we first get to dracula's castle there's armadillos everywhere that's actually something i meant to mention actually armadillos in the castle in castle dracula and things like that was due to the belief in that whole area that they burrowed into coffins and ate cadavers that they would do that i'm serious like this was like a belief system around that time like all of these types of burying animals would go into cemeteries, burrow down, and and get into coffins and eat the remains. You can't get a close-up of one real spider, or you can't get one shot of a bat flying, but you can hire three armadillos to crawl around this fucking castle ground. They were paid well, okay? They were paid well. They were good actors. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> There's actually something else when it comes to like from these moments on. I don't know if you noticed it in the thing, but I did a little digging in the research of this. And some of the shots that were, they were kind of like, they were inserted into the film and things like that. Those kind of long shots of the castles and things like that. Apart from them just being painted onto glass and then whatever was being shot in the foreground is shot in the foreground. Yeah. But the film was tinted green for certain parts of the performance to add a sense of macabre and an eerie quality to Dracula. <laughs> no, it's that a... again a lot in like, Phantom of the Opera. And I think also in Nosferatu, like the 1910s version, mm -hmm. yeah, where it's just kind of like a pane of <clears throat> colour over the film to kind of convey like an emotion or yeah. um, like a mood kind of thing. And I think it's really, really effective because it's kind of, it's like almost psychedelic. You yeah, know? yeah. It kind of comes out like completely out of left field for a movie that's so... No, it's not just black and white. It's black and white with the contrast turned up. All the black are very, very black. And yeah. all the whites are very, very white. And when it like gets dark, I love those scenes of Dracula being in his crypt uh, with his brides in the dark of night when he's being driven to trans uh, Dracula's castle. Any of the night scenes really are so black. They're so, so black that it's yeah. literally the centre of whatever screen you're viewing it on is literally just that part is illuminated because that's what you have to be looking at. And I think it's so I good. Love, and that's actually quite a skillful thing. People, a lot of times people think black and white is as simple as just using black and white film. And no, you no. have to like do your whole set. Like you have to have yeah. values. A lot of uh, classic example of this is the Adams Family, the original Adams Family home shot in black and white. There's all these rich, different tones, but when you look at it in color, the room is ink and red, and the skill to be able to have the black be very, very rich. David Lynch is another person who uh, uses black and white very well, and is able to get that richness of the really deep, deep blacks and yeah. really crisp whites. I think that's that's something that's very interesting. I mean, obviously, talking about the fact that you you did a little bit of uh, makeup and things like that. But that's what they used to do back in the 1930s and 40s is the women, you wouldn't be able to see their eyebrows so they would draw eyebrows on. They wouldn't use red to bring out their cheeks or their lips. They would use blue blush, blue lipstick in order to bring their lips like forward. Like translated on screen. Yeah. yeah you get that. Like, I think that's so cool. You get more of a tone. I think it's really it cool. It is great. It actually shows... Intelligence. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, I was going to say like a higher skill level, but I think that like kind of implies that they would have been shitty anyway. But it's like, yeah. no, I think it shows that a whole lot more work goes into these movies than some might think. It's really not as simple as just using black and white film stock. Yeah. Can I just talk about this? Uh, this is something that I just want to point out. Is Again, it's just so hilarious. Dracula does confront Van Helsing about, I know what you are, and blah, blah, blah. In such a polite matter, <laughs> <laughs> and he like he comes over across the room from each other. He just he comes over 
uh, he does this thing where like he tries to ensnare Van Helsing in that hypnotic stare You're thing. Really so strong. <laughs> and yeah. he does that thing where he reaches his hand forward like you like are now under favorite, my power like, kind like of thing. Love. Yeah. yeah. And he just whips out a cross from like I think his jacket pocket or something. <laughs> and, like... Wait, wait, I can do it. Hold on, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He just like he whips out the like... cross and like <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> He just like folds his cloak over himself and walks out of the room. <laughs> This is such a polite interaction where I know what you are. Well, I know that you know that I know what you are. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> we shall confront each other in the third act. <laughs> That's literally what it is. The interactions in this movie. Like, I know it's tame because it's the 30s and stuff like this. Everybody in this movie is so polite to each other. <laughs> They actually you know, like it's like for it's the like can I come up and see if you're doing okay later? Why would you even need to ask me? You can turn into fog. <laughs> this is performative consent. Oh my god, <laughs> performative consent. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care whether I say yes or not. If I had said no, you would have come in here and bit me away fucking neck anyway, you prick. <laughs> I do love the fact that that was actually something that the studio felt very powerful about, or sorry, they felt very strongly about was the fact that they wanted to keep it. Because apparently, apparently, now this is not confirmed, but these are rumours going around that there was blood. There was an extra 12 minutes of footage that was cut specifically for the reasons that they were quote unquote too gory for audience sensitivities. And that I think is so interesting but again, like, it's the same as the epilogue that apparently Van Helsing does this kind of, oh, well, we've warned you. They were cut from the film and they s- subsequently they've been lost to time. And I think it's such a, yeah. but I suppose I can understand at the time sensitivities, but it's such a terrible thing that they have been lost. And we could have enjoyed, you know, Bella Lugosi sucking the fuck out of the neck of Lucy and Mina, you know? We could have had... A very quick note before we move on. Um, this movie is pre-code, which to me was like kind of shocking. I don't know why I thought... like That was all introduced as the Hayes Code was like introduced in the 20s or whatever. That goes to show that this is kind of self-censoring. That there was yeah. nothing that was telling Todd, you have to have it this way. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that could have been left in, you know? Because, there was, again, there was no code mm. to tell you. The movie has to go like this. The movie has to end this way. The... Well, I suppose it, this is a very, very classic story. Good guys win, bad guy quote unquote dies or whatever like that, and the damsel in distress is saved. It's very yeah. classic. Yeah, it's very, it's very much a part of that kind of romantic era and things like that that I just absolutely love. Because I mean, obviously, like modern sensitivity nowadays, like people will be totally offended that Mina is so you know weak limbed and Lucy dies off screen and uh, you know and certain things about you know is dracula gay or or this or whatever like you, you like, that's always been a thing is that like yeah, that's always been like a thing but it's like a very so... big kind of questionable thing nowadays where the sensitivities back then were so provincial that the sensitivities now are so elevated to a point where you're like where was the equal representation of women or this or yeah, that like, that's you know where, like when you look at like um i think it was last year or the year before bbc did uh, an adaptation of Dracula, like a like a three part series, oh, and Dracula awful. is like it's awful. Hey, bitch, what's going on, Queen? I'm gonna fucking bite you, bro. Like it's it's so like he's got like his nail stone and his very like yeah like arm up, stiff arm or stiff elbow limp wrist. You know, that's very Dracula in this. <laughs> Yeah. Um, first two episodes mm. of the series I thought were great they were because lit. they were very and I loved the like, gender swap. A little swap. bit of a twist. I love yeah, the I gender liked, swap of Van the Helsing. Ex- the next thing I kind of wanted to talk about was this part that I was just so fucking confused about. There's two conversations going on in this scene. Mina and Jonathan are out on the veranda and she's transfixed at looking at something and he's he's like distracted because there's fucking bats flying like rubber bats flying around and she's like Are you what? talking to that giant fucking bat? <laughs> 
know? Yeah, because there's like bat squeaks like going off in the distance, and she's reacting yeah. to them like, "Wait, you want me to what to him? You want me to yeah. huh? Yeah. Huh?" And then. <laughs> And Jonathan's like, are you talking to me? Who are you talking to, Mina? And she's just like, yes. What? I never uh-huh. said such a thing. <laughs> yeah, she, he comes out and she's like, I love the night and I love the fog at night. And he's like, uh, that's a lie. You were literally trying to shit about the night. You basically said the night was a fat bitch yesterday. Um, you don't like the night. You don't like the fog. You're lying to my face. Are you talking to this fucking bat over there? Um... <laughs> And then this is where we, this is where we, I think we get like a gunshot. And then like those two, um, like, oh, yeah, that that... working there. That's <laughs> like... come with a gun. And that's where we get the like, oh, I think everyone around here is blooming mad. Like, we get like, like, <laughs> like that little thing. And then this scene ends with those two orderlies just walking away <laughs> and going, no, yeah, they just walk off screen. <laughs> Oh my god, I just... <sighs> the campy theatrics of this film is just so fucking amped up that, like, you know, I can't, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, it's just so fucking... So pushed to the max that you're... Like, half the time you can't take the fucking film seriously. Oh, I just love it. Yeah. I really do. I really, no, it's really great, do. it's great. Van Helsing is like, we we gotta go to Carfax here and Carfax fuck him number. up. Cause like, yeah. why the fuck not? <laughs> Yo, literally, I had this in my note last night. Van Helsing said, "Bitch, I'm here to fuck you up." <laughs> like, that's literally what it is. Oh Excuse me, I'm gonna kill you now. That's like, it's it's so polite and like nothing even like they go and they see um they're like kind of peeping Tom into Carfax Abbey. Uh, they see like Renfield is on the stairs and Renfield is a rat Renfield is like has ratted Dracula out so many fucking times <laughs> <laughs> and every time he gets caught he chooses to do it only when um only when Dracula is like about to enter a scene yeah you know what I mean yeah he's like by the way this is Dracula's entire plan don't tell anybody <gasps> Master, I'm loyal. I love you. I will break you blood. All this kind of shit every fucking time. <laughs> and so yeah, we get this. This is where we get that huge, like forty foot tall staircase. Beautiful, and, uh, love it. That's Rick what Field I actually kind of wanted to. Like, Sorry, no, no, go on. You, you. No, you were saying. I was just saying, it's like that exact kind of thing was um, gothic staircase. Was like that's a very heavy influence. Is the German gothic artistic expressional era very expressionist love it yeah. absolutely love it gorgeously lit and like that's a real set that's not a painting uh, a glass painting for thing that's a real fucking set loved it absolutely loved it and that was used again in uh mary shelley's frankenstein well not that i same was set, literally that just thought. about to say when yeah. they walk into that main room and i think it's blue and it's a little bit lower but yeah. it's like wider sets of stairs with no it looks like an art installation it yes. doesn't look like a set of stairs that you'd actually use yeah and i noticed that um all this this is very small like detail but i noticed all the stairs are like two inches long they're like tiny tiny little stairs yeah like there's hundreds of steps up on this thing but so we see renfield at like the bottom lucy in the middle or uh, mina in the middle and dracula behind and yeah. she's kind of just um very like traditional kind of like voodoo zombie almost she's kind of just yeah like, Living Bobby Dead Girl, all and, that, yeah. Oh, great reference. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's <laughs> my stripper like song, by the way. No joke. If I ever <laughs> to work in a life, uh, <laughs> if I ever was to try and work a polo, it would be Living Dead Girl. Oh my god. Cry, Mina yeah. <laughs> Just that's throwing a, That's another about. image now I can't get out of your head, out of my head. Mina Harker, like Living Dead Girl pole dancing. Oh, so funny. <laughs> Um, I think that whole video is uh, is an homage yeah, to uh, Doctor Caligari, Caligari, Caligari. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. get to it. If um, you want us to review that, we'll let us it. know. Doctor Cabinet of Doctor Caligari. Also, if you want us to talk more about Rob Zombie as as a topic, I'm so happy to do that. Yeah, we're that open. We're open for it. <laughs> <laughs> 
this like panned out shop and um renfield is like begging for his life he's like by the way master i like know that i like fucking ratted you out like more than a couple of times um <laughs> within an hour and told them all your plan let them hear um but like forgive me you can punish me you can torture me just don't kill me because van helsing basically was like you know you're gonna fucking suffer forever right if dragon like, gets to kill people because of you you bitch you bitch <laughs> and renfield is like don't kill me i can't have this innocent blood on my hands or whatever like that <laughs> and then dracula kind of just he we don't pushes him down like, the stairs kills him. he grabs him by like the fat of the arm or something like that you know <laughs> he like pushes him all the way down the stairs like we hear it from the top and then he falls uh out of frame into like debris and apparently yeah, like into a little pit, just like oh, yeah <laughs> Apparently, uh, there was meant to be screams and a blood-curdling noise that was meant to be accompanied when he disappears down that kind of hole thing. That All that sound was cut out uh, for the fear of repercussions of uh, censorship. So, yeah, they cut all of that out, apparently. And I was like, oh, my God, I fucking love that, y'all. For real. For real, for real. <laughs> cool story, bro. No, um... <laughs> Oh my god. Where Drac- the fuck are we? Hold on. <laughs> Dracula. <laughs> we're, we're doing Dracula, darling. Remember that? <laughs> no, I know, but I'm like, there had. See, again, this movie is so like. Because I'm like, I have the story of Dracula in my head that I'm like, <laughs> there's like so much missing. <laughs> literally, it's just like the end. Yeah, like, it's, it's literally after, the it's end. Like, like, like Van Helsing. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so we're, like, we're basically yeah. like in the we're like in the crypt underground in uh, Carfax Aberon. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can I just say it? Dracula is just killed off screen. Yeah, like we don't <laughs> now, and apparently that's another thing. His uh, screams of anguish were also cut from the film as well. So like there was no not filming. In, it was, not in my was, cut. Really? Maybe they were put back in yeah. or something. I don't know. There was yeah, there was kind of like a because. <gasps> <gasps> you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have oh, known otherwise yeah. like what would have happened because it's completely off screen yeah. you see van helsing approach a coffin and like kind of hold things in his hands and mina and jonathan and we hear like yeah oh, oh. and then it's it's dead then it's, it's over. done it's over <laughs> the like, end it's just the end yeah. the end literally it's like dracula's dead within like fucking like not even a whole minute it's like dracula's dead mean it's fine the end it's over no credit yeah like this film uh like and when we say the end we literally mean it like this is where the film like, title literally card, fades the to end. black like, the bin, end. it is over and yeah like how do you kind of finish that like what <laughs> it's so abrupt it's just like it is very very abrupt but also it is how i would expect a play to end yeah, to kind of just end true. kind of more abruptly like that and not curtains continue rolling. On. Yeah, very much, very that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I totally get it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's that for this, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Todd Browning's Dracula. Todd Browning's nineteen thirty one, uh, Universal monster classic. Um, arguably the first movie to really kind of kickstart the horror genre in the public eye for sure yeah it was awesome yeah that could be funny. can't be as fuck as you like but i love it it's a great movie now if you guys want us to continue with the, um the universal first iterations in each series if you want us to continue with that um let us Who know we if have? you want to hear us discuss we the have wolf man, frankenstein, frankenstein the wolf the invisible man, man. The Invisible Creature from the Man. Black Lagoon, Creature, which is like to, yeah. on the like tail end. Yeah. And um, the Mummy. The Mummy. Yeah. The original. Love movie. that. That um, high sheen. I know Bride of Frankenstein is a sequel, but I think she's as iconic. Oh yeah, she's kind of. definitely she's in there for sure. And then what's that other also, one? Also, she's uh, in it for fucking ten minutes at <laughs> most. Um, that other one, uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame apparently is part of that, but I don't really count it as you know that kind of thing. I guess well we have like like, like uh, the black cat and like all, black cat like, yes some sort of, like, yeah some kind of like um Edgar Allan Poe adaptations all um, of the House of Usher yeah White Zombie as well I'm I don't actually think White Zombie is a, a Universal movie but like Bella again, Lugosi is in it era yeah yeah if you want us to um to talk about like 
like actual throwbacks, like throwback throwbacks. Um, I I I know we do plan to do Nosferatu at some point. Yes. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. If you don't get a film that you want us to read, don't worry, because I guarantee you, in the future, we will be doing it. That's for sure. Also, if you want to hear it enough, just bug us. Yeah, we'll seriously. Just message us. Leave comments. Let us know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and follow us on our Instagram page. So, yeah. And hit us up on the Instagram. That would be... That's the, the quickest way to get, get to us, for sure. Down. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. You've been listening to... They're Here, here. Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Unpleasant dreams. <laughs> ah.